Hello and welcome back. My name is Natalie McLeod and I'm a counsellor. So today we're going to talk about our thoughts. I did a video about our feelings and emotions and how important they were. But today we're going to also look at our thoughts and how important they are and also how they can control our lives sometimes. So it's about becoming aware of those thoughts so then you can make the necessary changes. I'm going to present to you different ways that we think, which are not always very helpful. So we have the all or nothing thinking, sometimes called the black and white thinking. So you'll say something, if I'm not perfect, I have failed. Either I do it right or not at all. So it's about remembering that life is not just black and white that there is a spectrum of things. So when you find yourself thinking black and white, good or bad, just remember that you're just looking at one part of the canvas that you need to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. It's not because that friend didn't call you that is necessarily a bad thing or that, you're, or that that person doesn't like you. It could be that that person is busy or they probably saw your message and think I'm going to reply later and then maybe they've forgotten because they're so busy doing things with their children or um, something came up at work and they thought okay I'm going to because we're human we cannot think like a thousand things at the same time but it doesn't mean that they don't care about you and to be honest I have to be honest with you you're probably not the center of their world you know so in in other words all or nothing thinking can be detrimental to our happiness because we focus too much on one thing especially the negative we also have overgeneralizing. when you use words like everything is always rubbish nothing good ever happens then you see a pattern based upon a single event or being overly broad in the conclusions we draw so overgeneralizing again is putting everyone in the same basket. But really, is it true? Is it really true? Is it one particular environment that you're used to? So you're seeing time and time and time again the same things. But also, whatever you focus on generally is true because you're focusing on that. Another unhelpful thinking style is, is disqualifying the positive discounting the good things that have happened or that you have done for some reason or another. That doesn't count. So you, you have possibly been used to thinking that um, you couldn't be happy, that maybe it wasn't allowed to express happiness, that, you know, no, we, we can't be as happy, we can't be as joyous, you need to calm down a little bit. Who told you you weren't allowed to be happy? So challenge that belief. You don't have to believe everything you, you were told just because it was your parents. And also perhaps you need to look at that. We often put our parents on a pedestal because they're our parents, because we were told parents, you know, we had to respect parents. Yes, of course we do. However, by having the idea of my parents are higher than me, they know better, then we adopt everything they tell us. But you know what? Our parents are human. <laughs> They're human beings and they've been told by their parents, etc. Who's been told by their parents. We so look at it, we need to challenge it and we need to find the thoughts that belong to us. The thought that work for us, not the thought that we have because somebody told me that was the best way. Because remember, we're all human beings. You know, we're, we're the, there's not a human, um, a superhuman out there who's got all the answers. The other unhelpful thinking is magnification, catastrophizing or minimizing. Blowing things out of proportion is catastrophizing or inappropriate shrinking something to make it seem less important. So again, it depends on our confidence the confidence we have in ourselves so we tend to catastrophize we tend to minimize however when you're catastrophizing oh my god this you know and if and if and if and the what ifs are not helpful because you are creating an imagination that's how your imagination is so powerful because by imagining something terrible you feel the reaction in your body your emotions are kicked in 
And so it is about not identifying yourself to your thoughts and taking a step back and think, am I catastrophizing? And I'm catastrophizing probably due to a trauma that happened to you. And your body is not linear. And your body doesn't understand linear time. So anytime there's a trigger, it will react. So it's about thinking, okay, I'm reacting to something here and I need to be aware and I need to become aware maybe of what is triggering it so I can just move away from it. I can do something about it. The shoulds and the must are also very unhelpful ways of thinking. Sometimes they can be um, helpful, you know, the shoulds and the must. It gives you maybe uh, an aim to, to, or a goal to um, aim at. However, when you always use that word, I should do this and I shouldn't do that and I must and I mustn't, it's heavy, it's heavy, right? It really weighs heavy. How many shoulds have you got in your mind right now? So feel it again, how heavy is that? So um, using critical words like should, must or ought can make us feel guilty or like we have already failed. If we apply shoulds, to other people, the result is often frustration because they don't, um, because they're never good enough. People will never be good enough if they should. So when we look at other people and how they should be, we also criticize ourselves as how we should be. Fair enough, we may have values and values are very important to have because with values, then you um, are more likely to have healthy boundaries. However, when it's constant and you look out and you compare yourself or you, or you, um, when, it's, uh, when you expect too much of others, you'll never be happy. I'll tell you what, you will always be disappointed. So people are people, you cannot change other people and people have the right to be where they're at in their lives, on their paths. And there's no such thing as perfection. Perfection is something that we have adopted in our minds. But perfection is not a a, a done thing or not a fixed thing. So by constantly using the shoulds and the must, not only is it heavy, but it is also limiting in our view because we, we, we fixate on one thing. However, the life is broader and people behave in ways that maybe might cause frustration in ourselves but it's about learning to let go and and with you know without being passive but learning to let go in a way that will make us feel happier in ourselves that we don't have to expect it from the other and if you're not happy about the way somebody is then just change, just change the person, go to somebody else. But be aware that by having those shoulds and expecting it from everybody, you are more likely to be disappointed. This is my fault is another unhelpful thinking, that this is my fault, blaming yourself or taking responsibility for something that wasn't completely your fault. Blaming other people for something that was your fault. So again, it's about becoming aware of the thoughts that we have and trying to be a little bit more gentle with yourself. Um, By being more gentle, then you will breathe a bit more and you, you know, life will become a little bit easier rather than being so strong and critical on yourself. Labeling can be very unhelpful as well. Assigning labels to ourselves or other people. I'm a loser, I'm completely useless. They're such an idiot. Okay, in the moment you might be really cross and we all do it, we call people idiots and you know, your expression, you're expressing your anger, okay? But it's about again, becoming aware of that, that okay, I've labeled that person, but it doesn't define who they are. They possibly acted idiotically um, or you know, you say to yourself, oh my gosh, I was an idiot in the moment, but it doesn't define you. So we both have the dark and the light aspects And it's about remembering that sometimes, yes, we can be shitty to other people or people can be shitty towards us, but it doesn't define who we are because we constantly change. We constantly change. One moment you might be shitty, one moment you might be okay and a very nice person. One person might think you're shitty, another person loves you to bits. 
So there is no really fixation there. Again, it fluctuates and it doesn't define who you are as a person. Jumping to conclusion, two plus two equals five. There are two key types jumping to conclusion, mind reading and fortune telling. Mind reading is imagining we know what others are thinking. Fortune telling is predicting the future. All of these are unhelpful because they're not really real. Again, it's about assuming something. It's about assuming something due to our own perception of life, to the way we've been conditioned or brought up. Um, so I hope these different ways of thinking will have made you think um, of perhaps trying to challenge your thoughts because these are the ones that are crowding your view which are blurring your view from the reality of things, the actual reality. Reality is big, everyone. Reality is a big thing. It's not just one tiny little snippet or facet. It's huge. It's, an, it's like the iceberg. You have the tip of the iceberg and you can only see the tip. But below, below on the water, you have much more. You have 80% that you cannot see. It's huge. So... Every time you have those unhelpful thoughts, it's okay to have them. It doesn't mean that you're crazy or that you are um, that you are weak or that, oh my God, if I don't have them, then I'll be a weakling. No, 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 not that at all. It's uh, a way of seeing things that actually creates a lot of anger and frustration and suffering. So it's about changing your perspective. It's about broadening it that you will find a bit more relaxation in your life, a bit more happiness and um, support. Lastly, let's challenge those thoughts. I'm going to teach you a tool, a very simple tool to challenge those thoughts. So every time you have those thoughts that I mentioned earlier, is it true? Often the answer is yes. Well, yes, it is. This is the brain initially reacting. It's the autopilot we live with. Number two, ask yourself, is it absolutely true? Is, it, is this thought 100% accurate? Can you see the thought in a different way? Number three, how does the thought make me feel? Notice any storylines or narratives you're holding on to and name the feeling I'm sad, I'm angry, jealous or hurt. And number four, what would things be like if I didn't hold this belief? So this is from the Thoughts Are Not Facts practice, which you can find online. And it's a very good tool that I use in counseling and on myself to always challenge those beliefs that you have. And the beliefs that you have originally were a defense mechanism, you know, because you've probably experienced a deep trauma and since then you've learned that this was the best way to keep you alive. However, it's making you suffer. So it's and you will find that you'll create more space. It's a little bit like weeding your garden, taking out what you don't need. Somebody's planted some weeds or some flowers or plants that you don't want in your garden, in your sphere, in your sphere of life. So it's about weeding that out. This is not what I want. This is not what I want. I don't need this. And once you've weeded out, then you will create space and you'll find that you'll be more relaxed in life, more accepting of yourself and others, and life will flow better. So I hope this has been helpful to you. And until the next time, take care. Bye.